Hello and welcome to my first video in the year 2022. I wish you all a happy new year, health, peace and exciting tinkering. And today I would like to come back to this Octec Hippo 15 mainboard which I repaired recently. Last time I promised you guys some benchmarks of the CPUs but unfortunately I was forced to postpone that test. Today I have some bad and some good news for you but first of all let's briefly come back to the repair which I made on this board. As I often mention, I am a software engineer and not an electronics engineer. This whole channel is just a hobby and I try my best, but sometimes I do have false conclusions and assumptions. And before I start, I would like to correct such a false assumption which I made last time. If you saw that repair, you maybe remember this burnt part. I called it fuse because I assumed that this part is just responsible for the overcurrent protection since it is sitting right between the power transistor and the CPU. Well, this was not quite right. It is indeed responsible for the current limitation, but it is actually not a fuse. This is what is called current sense resistor. This resistor is sitting right on the rail which powers the CPU and it has a very low resistance value to keep the influence on the current which flows through this resistor as low as possible. But it is just as much that a voltage which falls over this resistor is still measurable. There are two thin traces from both sides of this resistor which are going to the power transistor control circuit. The job of such a current sense resistor is simple. Out of its known resistance value and measured voltage on it, the current which flows through this resistor can be calculated. And if this current goes above some limit, the control circuit will close the power transistor and limit this current. So this part is indeed here for an overcurrent protection, but it is not just a fuse as I assumed in my last video. During the repair I installed a 3 amps fuse which will give some protection and is better than just a jumper wire, but I will replace it again in the near future by an appropriate current sense resistor. Unfortunately I just still don't have the right value resistor at hand now. Anyway, the mainboard is working just fine and the installed fuse is not a limitation for the benchmarks I wanted to make today. However, as I already said, I couldn't finalize the promised benchmarks. I already made a lot of benchmarks for the Intel, AMD and Cyrix CPUs, but unfortunately it turned out that the most interesting exemplar, the UMC U5S, is stone dead. It doesn't even get warm and so I had to cancel the tests. However, I promised that benchmarks and I am still very curious myself about it. So the good news is that thanks to the user i440bx from the DOS Reloaded DE community, another 40 MHz UMC U5S could already be found and will hopefully reach me soon. And for today, I decided to change the program a little bit and try some performance tests and overclocking instead. Unfortunately, I don't have NOR 486DX4, neither any faster 486 CPUs in my collection. The fastest I have is this AMD AM 486DX2 80. This is a 3V CPU with an internal multiplier of 2 and is designed to run with frontside bus of 40 MHz. And fortunately this CPU allows to set the multiplier to 3 and the Octec Hippo 15 mainboard supports multiplier switching and frontside bus of 25, 33, 40 and 50 MHz. So let's see how far I could get with it. As I said in my last video, the 486 mainboards, which were based on this UMC chipset, belong to the fastest 486 mainboards out there and most of the records were made on the boards similar to the Octa Hippo 15. For the benchmarks I still had to make some preparations. First of all, this board had only 128 kilobytes of cache, so I found a set of ICs to get to 256k of cache. All the ICs I found in my spare parts box were 20 nanoseconds or slower. So I borrowed those 15 nanoseconds UMC ICs from another dead mainboard, which is currently waiting for the repair. In case you have a similar setup and wonder which cache timings are the best to use with such board, for up to 33 MHz frontside bus even 25 nanoseconds SRAM should be sufficient. For 40 MHz you should use at least 20 nanoseconds and for 50 MHz at least 15 nanoseconds. Otherwise the system could get unstable. Another thing I tested before the benchmark was the BIOS. And on the Ultimate Retro Project page you can find different BIOS versions for this mainboard. 
and I tried all of them and found that the original version 095040 which was on the board was already the fastest. The BIOS version was not previously available in the database so I used the chance and uploaded the ROM image as well. The next point was the RAM. Most of the 486 boards work flawlessly just with the FPM memory, but the chipset UMC8881-8886 is one of the latest for the 486 platform and many boards based on that chip started to support EDO RAM as well. It doesn't always work and depends on some additional things, but I made some tests prior to the benchmarks and it turned out to work stable in this Hippo 15 mainboard. I was hoping to get some performance boosts with the EDO RAM, that's why I decided to give it a try after all, but unfortunately on this board I couldn't measure any differences to FPM at all. Anyway, all the tests were made with EDO RAM. Also since this was such a late 486 mainboard, it already supported PCI and so the graphics card used for the benchmarks was this quite fast and reliable S3 Verge. And as a hard drive, just as always, I used this compact flash to IDE adapter with a card with pre-installed DOS and the benchmarks, which were by the way the usual suspects. Landmark speed test, speed sys, sys info, NSSI, 3D bench, PC player benchmark, Doom and Quake. All graphics benchmarks I made in VGA, since at least fast paced games in SVGA were not really playable on a 486 back in the days anyway. Actually also Quake is not really a good use case, which makes sense on a 486, since that game needs a fast FPU and was actually designed for the Pentium. But I was still interested to see some numbers there as well. So now the interesting question, which clock did I use and how far could I get with this 80 MHz CPU? First of all I wanted to use something as a reference and for that I used the Intel 486DX266. It probably sounds a little bit weird, since there were faster 486 CPUs available back in the days, but the DX266 was the last high-end 486 CPU on the market. All the later and faster 486 CPUs were released as Intel Pentium was already in the stores. And the 486 platform was considered as a cheap and low-end alternative to the Pentium platform. That's why I always consider the DX266 as the most interesting 486 CPU and always go directly with Pentium if I need something beefier. Please see it as my personal opinion and nothing else. Furthermore, when talking about benchmarks and overclocking, I'm still always excited to see how far the 486 CPU or the whole platform can get. Before I started, I made some stability tests and this board turned out to be surprisingly stable. For the most tests, I could turn all the timings and ratings to the limit. I could reduce all the memory weight states to zeros, reduce the cache access times and, very important, enable slow refresh rate which boosts the memory band with quite a lot. I already explained in one of my videos why slow in this case actually means fast. Feel free to watch that explanation. So the reference I used was the Intel 486DX266, which works with Multiplier 2 at 33 MHz frontside bus. And in my first run, I downclocked the AMD 486DX2 80-66 MHz using the same 33 MHz frontside bus and the multiplier 2 as for the Intel's counterpart. The results of the AMD versus Intel at 66 MHz were absolutely identical. No wonder actually, since unlike for example Cyrix or UMC, the 486 CPUs by AMD were practically just clones of the Intel versions. Still, I wanted to confirm it with my own results and they seem to match absolutely. I think I will not comment on the numbers now, it will be just interesting to compare them with the other results, but you can pause the video here if you want to take a longer look at the numbers and compare them with your own experience. I would only like to mention a couple of things which were interesting in this run. First of all, let's take a look at speed seas. For both AMD and Intel CPUs, as all other benchmarks too, uh, it reported absolutely identical numbers. And I would like to point out the high memory and cache throughput, 
which is typical for UMC8881-8886 mainboards. Other 486 chipsets are usually about 10-20% to slower. These numbers are maybe not quite the best you can get on this platform, but they are not very far from that. Furthermore, all of the test tools reported both the AMD and the Intel CPUs at 66 MHz as an Intel 486DX266. Some tools like NSSI detected the AMD CPU properly with higher frequencies as you will see later, but at 66 MHz it also just said Intel 486DX2. By the way, since the voltage regulator on this mainboard was broken and repaired in my last video, during my benchmarks I tested the CPU voltage and the temperature of the power transistor regularly. The transistor remained barely warm all the time, which was a bit surprising to me, but maybe this is due to the fact that I took a slightly more powerful transistor than what was originally used on this mainboard. And the voltage jumpers were set to auto detection because I was curious how good it will work and as you see the voltage was with about 3.4 volts absolutely in limits for this CPU. Ok, time to move on to the next step where I set up the front side bus to 40 MHz as specified for this 80 MHz DX2 CPU. The system booted properly and ran all the benchmarks absolutely stable even with the very sharp timing settings in the BIOS which I mentioned before. Interesting was that suddenly some of the tools like NSSI started to recognize the CPU as an AMD model and not as Intel anymore, like it was at 66 MHz. This is interesting because frontside bus was the only thing that has changed. I guess NSSI simply knows that there was no 80 MHz Intel CPU, so it just assumes that it has to be an AMD. Other tools continue to say that it is an Intel 8486DX or DX2. I think that this CPU has no CPU ID anyway, so it's not quite easy to tell exactly if it is an AMD or Intel, especially where AMD was basically a clone of the Intel CPU as already said. And take a look once again at the memory and cache throughput. The numbers do benefit quite a lot from the 40 MHz frontside bus and are really not bad at all. And although the memory throughput doesn't have any influence on the CPU performance, it plays a huge role in the real use cases, like games. Anyway, here are the numbers and overall performance rose in average by about 20%. That is basically a linear improvement to 66 MHz which we had before. However, in Quake there was an increase of almost 25%. I think this is due to higher frontside bus clock and much better memory and cache performance. And now the interesting part. Let's take a look at my overclocking experiments. Fortunately, this AMD DX280 supports not only multiplier of 2, but also 3. So I reduced the frontside bus to 33 MHz once again and rose the multiplier to 3. All the BIOS settings were left unchanged. And the system didn't only start and detected the CPU as a 486DX4100, it worked also super stable and I could finish all my tests once again. And NSSI told me that the CPU was the AMD 486DX4 at 100MHz, where all the other tools did see it as an Intel CPU again. In speed sees, the memory throughput went a little bit down again compared to 40MHz frontside bus, but the overall performance was still very impressive. Here are the numbers. Interesting point is that the CPU performance rose in average by about 25% linear with the increased clock. However, the performance in the games and graphical benchmarks didn't rose as much compared to 80 MHz, since the lower FSB of 33 MHz limited the memory bandwidth again. So in games there was only an increase of only 10% in average. That's an interesting result, but it would be absolutely amazing to get the frontside bus to 40 MHz again and get the CPU to 120 MHz with multiplier 3. Yes, it would be nice. However, the CPU exemplar which I have here unfortunately didn't want to run at 120 MHz. I tried all kind of different settings and even higher voltage, but I couldn't convince the CPU to post.
So I decided to give 50 MHz frontside bus a try and stay at 100 MHz. And this CPU didn't want to post at that frontside bus as well. So I tried another AMD DX280 CPU from my collection. This is an earlier revision and is a 5 volt version. Unfortunately, this one has a fixed multiplier of 2 and doesn't allow to set anything else, but at least I was hoping to get it to 100 MHz with frontside bus of 50 MHz. And the CPU did post, but unfortunately it was highly unstable. I couldn't finalize any of the graphical benchmarks. I turned down the timings in the BIOS to the lower settings, but the CPU just didn't want to play properly at that frequency. So I asked myself if this board maybe has problems with 50 MHz frontside bus and gave this Intel 486DX50 a try. Well, and the CPU actually did work, however I had to set the timings in BIOS a little bit less aggressive, since I got a lot of graphical glitches in the benchmarks. But with these settings the CPU worked absolutely stable, and again I could finish all the tests, which means that the main board does work at 50 MHz frontside bus properly. It's just my CPUs which don't like it. To be honest, I was hoping to get the CPU over 100 MHz, but still, this experiment was very interesting for me. I got the CPU to 100 MHz, which is a 25% overclock, and I could see that this impressive mainboard is capable of. This was by far the highest memory throughput, which I personally measured on a 486. It was definitely my personal record so far. As I started to work on this video, I was planning to benchmark the UMC U5S and some other 40 MHz CPUs. But unfortunately I had to change my plans for now. I hope you were not too disappointed about it and found these benchmarks a little bit interesting as well. I promise to make another video about the UMC and the other CPUs as soon as I have one working exemplar. And for today this is it. Once again, Happy New Year to all of you. And I say thank you and goodbye.